Hello again, it's Lock Noob, and well, in front of us we've got a lock, which when when you look at it, doesn't it actually look pretty cool? It's got a nice sort of brushed finish there. Looks like it's made out of uh, some kind of steel. Um, where's my magnets? Definitely made of something. Looks like it's made of hardened steel, actually. Although, frankly, I doubt it. Um, it's got a nice shackle, which sort of says hardened if you look very carefully. Um, good 8 mil shackle there, you know, it doesn't look so bad, I mean, look, oh, a, a dimple keyway, gosh, that's going to be good. Um, and even when you look at the key, it doesn't look that bad, does it? You know, it's a 5 pin, um, highs protected by lows, how does it work? Well, pretty well, truthfully. Uh, ball bearing mechanism, you think, yeah, that's not so bad. Well, just be aware that nearly all of these uh, locks, and I imagine this is made in China, they're not great locks. They're not going to protect too much. Even if they say hardened, the likelihood is they're not. And the body, probably made of some pot metal. I think I might have even impressioned, foil impressioned this lock on a video, um, but I never really picked it. And the way I tension it is um, I use um, a wave lock tensioning tool. This one's actually been cut down um, for another purpose, but do you know what? It works surprisingly well in these smiley dimples. Um, it grips on either side and rotates quite nicely. And you don't need to even use dimple flags with these locks. I, I'm just using a, a standard sort of uh, South Auburn Max pick. So I'm going to go in and just bring it underneath the pins. So go down, go underneath the pins, and then sort of rotate the pick uh, round up to sort of go under and then turn it so I can get under the pins, otherwise it's a bit difficult. So, um, yeah. Go in and oh, too far. T and turn, then put a bit of tension on. There we go. And just go along and uh, and just pick anything that that binds really. Um, go in again. Go back through and look at this. Oh, no, 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 no. Ah, don't you dare. Ah, I actually picked that, didn't I? And then I slip with my tension, and it's all done for. Um, so let's try that again. If it is that easy, this shouldn't be a, a hardship to to make sure it's all picked. Um, then go in again. Uh, any pins that need picking. All seems to be pretty much set and we're open. Oh, and I lost tension again, but it is definitely open this time. Look at that. There we go, and the shackle release. So these these locks, well, I'm afraid they're all pretty much the same. Um, you might get a, a good one. Um, not all smiley dimple locks are bad, but the tolerances in this are so poor. Um, you know, I, the pins picked so easily, and it just doesn't need any special tools to really get in. Um, I imagine I could probably even rake this, so I might give that a go in a second. Okay, we've got a rake. Let's. Uh Let's give this a go. Get my tension tool in. Stick the rake down. Again, I'm going to lay off the tension, put the rake in and under, like that, and then just gently, um, I'm going to sort of rock it, I think. This is a, a Picology um, sort of proprietary rake, so they do. Um, If that doesn't work, I'll go for a, a sparrow's worm or something instead. Don't want to um, over overset those pins and help it. Very very light tension on here. Okay, that's not working so let's go with a uh, maybe one with um, higher uh, ripples okay. 
and we're open. There we go. So we did get a rake on that. Do you know what? I find it harder to rake than uh, to pick. But then a lot of us find that, don't you think? That actually when we're used to picking, we're used to um, feeling those pins one by one. And finding the rake with the sort of the right frequency, that's actually part of the trick. Easier once you have the right rake. I imagine now I know this is the right rake. It'll take a little less time. Um, but let's actually have a look at those rakes and see if we can learn something from it. So I used this one, very low ripple, because it has you know, not too much height under the pins, didn't want to overset anything. And then I swapped it out for this one with um, sort of a higher frequency. Still relatively shallow compared to, say, the Sparrow's Worm, which is a tiny, tiny bit higher. So I went for the lowest and worked my way up. But if you look at the key, let's have a look if we can see why this worked. So, yeah. I think what's happening there is that I'm just able to get under pins uh, two and four just enough by raking back and forth without oversetting one, three and five. So yeah, with combined with the poor tolerances in this lock, that's a successful rake. So I think in conclusion we can say that just be aware when you see a lock which actually looks quite nice, has a fancy keyway on there. Even if it has a ball bearing mechanism um, and it says hardened on it, you know what? If it's really cheap, sometimes you get what you pay for. All right, I'll see you next time.